born in 1966 up until 1996, and they checked whether they had a prescription for insulin and also asked, finally, the, the, the fam family physician in the medical records whether those babies, when they were born, were getting vitamin D. And how this breaks down is that the way the statistics work, it's showing kind of a relative risk. In other words, if people did not give their baby vitamin D, they do a statistic and they say, well, their odds of getting of a prescription for insulin, call it one, okay? Now, those that were getting in Finland in the 1960s, the recommended dietary allowance for a baby of vitamin D had a risk of juvenile type 1 diabetes that was 20% of those that didn't get any vitamin D. And the really interesting thing here, and it's almost hidden in the paper, look at the number, look at the recommendation for vitamin D for infants in Finland in the 1960s. 2,000 units. That's huge, or you may think it's huge. Maybe it's appropriate. Recently, there are lots, or several, three really nice, but again, cross-sectional papers relating um, effectively glucose and insulin and diabetes type things. And these are healthy people, but what we're doing is on the horizontal axis showing the vitamin D blood level in a whole bunch of healthy people. And this is after giving them a glucose challenge, blood sugar test. And on the y-axis, the vertical up the graph, the higher it goes, the higher the blood sugar, right? So this is fasting blood sugar, um, the blood sugar level. And after 60 minutes of a glucose load, you can see that there's a statistically significant lowering of blood sugar as people's blood vitamin D levels go up. And look where the good end is. It's higher than 80 nanomoles per liter. And on the right side here, what we've got is the, the insulin level after a glucose challenge test. Okay, the, the insulin, if your blood vitamin D is very low, the insulin has to go higher than if your vitamin D is, is, is where you'd like it to be higher than 80 nanomoles per liter. These are all pieces. Now, the frustrating thing is the research isn't getting done to actually prove that this is it. You're getting circumstantial evidence. The real evidence has to lie in studies where people give vitamin D and show that the blood sugars go down as a result or that insulin levels respond less severely. So I'm just closing at this point. It's a long story of kind of, I enjoy um, doing it and I appreciate your attention because I can see that you're watching very carefully. So you've got a story that basically says the easiest, that what I wish you could do for yourself is at least buy the cheapest vitamin pill you can in the drugstore, the 1,000 units of vitamin D and take one a day. Take one a day and I'm sure you'll do, you know, in the long run, your body a favor. Um, there is no harm, nothing bad will happen. And certainly we've studied the 4,000 units a lot in Toronto. Nothing bad happens. And I, I'm not going to promise you lots of good things. All I can say is in life, you have to play the odds. You know, you can have a lot of crazy drivers who don't get into car accidents. You can have a lot of safe drivers who do. But if you have a choice, I think you should drive carefully through your life and take the information I'm giving you and, and choose for yourself. Thank you.